Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Center for the Less Good Idea. My name is Athena Mazarakis, and I'm the momenteur of So, the Academy for the Less Good Idea. Welcome to this open moment. Um, what you're about to experience and witness this evening is what has emerged out of a two-day mentorship program led by Nklankla Maklangu and Tulani Chauke. Uh, the title of the mentorship was Thinking in and Through the Body. So last week we were really, in fact, exactly a week ago, last Wednesday, we were really fortunate enough to enjoy the first of a series of activations towards the run of the head and the load. So we had William Kentridge and some of his key collaborators in the space giving us a phenomenal background, history, context to the head and the load. This week in the second activation in a series of, of events that lead up to the opening on the 21st, we have a moment to enjoy the head and the load as a provocation. So what we've done is we've invited Nklankla and Tulani, who are both key performers and key collaborators of Williams, and key performers in the head and the load, to share not only some of the approaches that led to the making of the head and the load, but really to the approaches, the approaches that William has developed, um, that are shared by Nklankla and Tulani, that are really what the approaches and methodologies of the center are, are, are founded on and grounded on. So this mentorship really responds to the head and the load. And having watched what's been happening in the room over the last two days, it's really exciting to see people respond to the really complex themes and histories that the work grapples with, filter it through their bodies, through their experiences, and offer a a very unique individual response to the work. And so in that way, it's really exciting for us as the academy that one work and a particular approach that is what this space is built on becomes really generative uh, for other artists, for young artists in their practice. So this evening, we are really, really excited to, to open this process to you. We we really enjoy doing this, this exposure of process because it's something that audiences don't often get a window into. In order to do that, it's really vulnerable making for these artists. So I really want to thank the artists you're about to see this evening because in a way we've stepped into a very early moment of exploration and, and interrogation. So I invite you to really experience and witness that with that understanding and that awareness that there, there's been two days in which these artists have engaged with Nklankla and Tulani's artistic strategies and, and processes and the themes of the work and have begun to offer a response. So it's begun to really pu push and extend their own practice. So we're watching something that is very new, very fragile, very beautiful, and it's, it's really been quite extraordinary to witness what has emerged and to hear the conversations in the room. So I invite you to really watch it with, with that in mind. So this is process. This is not a production. This is not polished work. This is a beginning. So I'd really love to thank our 12 participants, uh, 13 in fact, sorry, who were invited in through an open call. So they applied and these were the people who were selected and who you will get to enjoy this evening. Jason Sebe, Kanyesilim Chobile, Lechlochonolo Makele, Matapelo Matabane, Muhammad Dauji, Nompumelelo Butwa, Nonofo Olekeng, Petunia Msani, Sami Maseko, Tabang Matlala, Uvile Timba, Vuyelwa Maluleke, and Anthony Torres, who joins us from Miami, from the Arsh Performing Arts Center. So we really are delighted to have you in the room. It's been a delight to engage you as artists and to witness how encountering this work pushes and provokes your own practice. So welcome. I'm going to hand over very soon to Nklankla, who will do a little bit of a framing about what it is exactly that you're about to watch and how they've come to this material. But a little uh, word of uh, ESCOM warning. 
Uh, as you all know, we've been ramped up to stage six, so we have to stay on time, and I'm already talking too long. So we have to end at eight. We'll try our best to do that, but we do have a backup. There will be some light. It will become really minimalist lighting. <laughs> um, stark and minimalist, but there'll be enough to, if we do go over, to at least uh, see what's happening, and then we will also have ushers who will help light your way to Fox Street to your vehicles or to Uber pickup points. So please just look out for the three pop art ushers, Demi and, and Haley as well, who will assist you. Please don't try and venture out into the dark on your own. So with that, a very warm welcome to Nklankla and a big thank, thank you to Nklankla and Tulani for holding such a beautiful mentorship the last two days. Oh, there's people up there as well. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, good evening everybody. Uh, I'll try not to be long uh, to just give context. I have this fancy bag. Um, the, the first thing I've learned when, 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 when we did season one at the Center for the Less Good Idea, William usually talks about the idea that boils inside your stomach and you want to, you can't wait to take it out. And uh, when I was invited to, to do this mentorship program, I freaked out because I was like, uh, what, what do I have to offer? Because I'm always also trying to figure out what I'm doing myself. And when the center asked me, what kind of participants do you want? Do you want more actors, more singers, more dancers? Because you are confusing. We never know whether you, sometimes you're a composer, sometimes you're a choreographer, sometimes you're a performer. I said, please, let us invite people that I we can learn from. And Tulani agreed with me that we would like people that we can learn from. And we are very privileged that all the 13 participants that we've had, we have learned so much from you. And thank you for your generosity. Secondly, thank you. And the great idea that I brought and was, okay, because this is a provocation on the head and the load. What is the head and the load all about? It's about the First World War and the involvement of Africans and the Africans in the First World War. It's about the Berlin Conference. It's about people cutting up Africa and deciding who takes what. I thought of an idea of a handbag, a ladies' handbag full of ladies' contents. That, okay, what is it that you take it and dismantle it in the room in a very way that is intrusive and invasive and horrible? And I brought the bag, and we tried the idea, and it collapsed, and it died, and it's something that I don't want to see. <laughs> and after, but, but what the, the idea that we started chasing, when the participants were introducing themselves, I said, you have one and a half minutes to introduce your practice. Tell us who you are. When you get off that stage, we should know exactly what you're all about. That was our first material and it was beautiful. It was all inspired by beauty. You know, it's about the, 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 the words that came were very positive. And then we started now getting into the subject of the head and the load. There are three sections in our booklet, in our education booklet that we have. The first one is about the Berlin Conference. We'll read it in a circle. And then the words that came out of that were very ugly. And we started now finding the juxtaposition between the beauty and the ugly. And from that, we read the sec second section, which gave us, uh, which talks about the war itself, being inside the war, what does it mean? And from that, Tulani took them through a section of Head and Dote, which we called Wounded Men. It is done by two people in the show, but we see how does Wounded Men look when it's performed by 13 people. And we have that. And, another th and then we read another section, which was the aftermath of the war. And this was the most interesting part for me, because there we talk about what happens after the war. If you left as, as a farmer or an animal breeder to war, you came back with the skills of an engineer. What does it mean to be an engineer but come back in the country where engineering is preserved for white people only? What is it to come back as a radar reader but there's no submarine? 
What is it to come back as a rifleman, but there's no war? What is it to come back as a cook, but there's no food? And I started thinking about William Kentridge's sentimental machines, that these human beings become the sentimental machines of you have a sentimental knowledge that is only for display. The three singers that William and I collaborated on, the bicycles that with the megaphones, they're beautiful to look at, but they are not for their function. They are for you to look at. And what are their sentimental objects? From people, some are literal, some are metaphoric. So it is a collection of all those things. And it was done in two days, and this is what we came up with. These are dog tags. The military gives them to every service member when you uh, join, and it's a form of identification. Um, it has your name, your social security number, your birth date, and your blood type. Um, everyone is just required to wear them and have them on your person at all times while you're in. In war, it's also important to have because this is how you identify the dead, to notify the families, to notify the branch of the military. We even tie them into our boots just to have two different places to find them. The dog tags that I have are in a box under my bed back at home. This one I made. With new information. This ruler belonged to my grandfather. He used it to measure out Fabrics, materials, things that he would construct garments out of to clothe people. He used it to carve and measure out a space for himself in the world. I don't know why I have this. I don't know why I have this. I kept it when he died. I don't measure the world in this way. 21, 16, thirds, thirds, sixth, twelfths, halves, fourths. Made in England number 1513. This ruler is useless to me. 16th, 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 3rd, 8th, 3rd, 8th, 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 I'm obsessed by it. I want to hear it. It's in the breath.
Coco's dog. Um, she gave it to me. Um, and I gave it superpowers. the superpowers <laughs> There's a thing about loss. What is the thing about loss? Painful, sadness. What is the thing about loss? What is the thing about loss? Can loss be good? Can loss be beautiful? Is it just ugly?
nzima Before war, these hands had little to do with gripping rifle barrels and tapping triggers and more with gripping pencils and tapping keyboards. The only time they shook was when saluting other soldiers on the job.
My, my sentimental thing, it is a bicycle. Um, it was my father's bicycle. Yo, the parking has me. <coughs> Yo, it was my father's bicycle and yeah, it's rusted, it's there in the garage. We don't really use it because we don't know how to ride a bicycle. Um, yeah, it was his bicycle and he died on that bicycle. Like, he... <laughs> so... <laughs> <coughs> so... <laughs> so he... <d> <laughs> So, 
Okay. Oh. So he died on the bicycle. And the bicycle is in the garage now. It's rusted and none of us know how to ride the bicycle. So, yeah. I get on a train. I woke up at five fix saying in a plunge. Because we figure it's that day. We are we are plunge. So that woke up. The thing I was into excited as I was. I were to I couldn't even think straight. David and I of us again. The first thing to do is to bath. There's no time. But we are we are I must be there. On the train. Send the hamba again, your quality see a down most. pagati. To the train. See, I'm On the train. On the train, the figure get we train. Try how train can be a malang. It's a zinja. Hey, get the blinder. The other glasses we are shocking, but I can't go in. Ding in a card. Let's get another card. Get in a little push. Got a glung hill on the train. The girl get on again. Send in for my little card. Yo, in this way, I'm in Jani. Ya betelela. On the train, ya kukuzela. Ya kafuzela. Ya kukuzela. Ya kafuzela. Hai. Now, sister, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, on the train, to lead, ya betelela. Now, to stay, man, sieza, sia figa, sieza. The train, yeza. Your figure. Delinde. Bella Bantu. Hi, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Hi, Molene Putin Molo Molo. As I wait, see, I'm going to see men. I know what quality is a senior. But to bet you five, I bet to six, I bet to seven. On the train. Did you not get on the train? Did you not get on the train? Delinda, delinda. Don't talk in language. Did you not get on the train? Go back to eight. Now the senior steamer is here. Figa, here Kavuzela, here Kavuzela, here Kavuzela, here Kavuzela, here Kavuzela, here Kavuzela. She knows it. The train, delinda, delinda, delinda. Delinde. 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 Delinde.
came to Bothell. And it smells like this. <coughs> Once in country, they began to shake as I locked and loaded my M16 after boarding the back of a five-ton truck. The only thing louder than the deep breaths from my gaping mouth was my heart pounding against the inside of my Kevlar chest plate. Point your feet. It's all, oh, no, no, you have to point your foot, okay? Use it. You see the beautiful ballet feet, yeah? Yeah. More? And slowly when you point your foot, yeah, go to it. And follow it through. That's it. Opportunity you get, you point your foot.
tole mwaona kuti stoti msemba wakula Lock, 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 tension, 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 tension,
Ja. Well, check. One, two. Well, under the direction of Ntlantla uh, Masango and Tulani uh, Chauke, they, um, it's curated the right word. We may have provided some of our experiences and um, added meaning to what we are receiving, uh, but above everything, Ntlantla Masango and uh, Tulani Chauke were guiding us through the process. So some of, I can speak for myself, some of it is from personal experience, others, I'm not too sure. I think also it's mainly because we're from different backgrounds within our artistry, so I also think it's feeding off of each other's energy and seeing, or rather being in the moment and seeing what would actually enrich the work itself. Though we did not know what the end goal was, um, Ntlantla and Tulani, I don't know if they had an idea, I don't think that's what they said, but um, with the energy that was in the room, I think it was pretty obvious, I would, I would think, that um, we would sort of, I would latch on to her, she would latch on to her, she would latch on to her, and it just became a chain reaction of just how it sort of developed, I, I, I think, yeah. And just to clarify one thing, um, you, your question was, how did we know that this would work in the piece? This is not the piece. This is just material. That this can work, this can work, maybe this will throw, this can develop. So, I mean, you don't find the piece in two days. Um, um, it's just uh, provocations, material, and then we are at the stage now we have to think about making a piece. So if this was just us putting it together for the purpose of you experiencing what we've come up with. I, I like that word, I wanted to say provocations. Mm. I've heard it so often here in these last two days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I marry it to associations. Um, you said, I think um, the body is, knows things. Um, Sis Klingi said to me, it's, 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 um, it is the oldest, the most ancient thing we have the brain knows what it is experiencing now, and the body's ancient. So the knowledge maybe is tested, or uh, I'm glimmering with people's names. <laughs> <laughs> Athena said, um, we inherit memory, I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> um, in our DNA. So I think the provocations with the work, that the, the, the name of the workshop being or it being for, from, stemming from the head and the load, it is associated with my memory, probably. Mm -hmm. And actually, yes, for me, not the experience, but the word associates itself to experiences similar, maybe. So then mm -hmm. these things are happening in the workshop, and then something is interesting and exciting to Brandt and he says, I want to see that. That worked, this didn't work just to answer the question exactly. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Hello. Uh, my name is Buit Dumelo. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for that performance. I really enjoyed it. Um, from what I got from it is that everybody experiences something. And like what you just explained now that we inherit trauma through the things that we carry, through loss and the experiences that we have. And what I got from this piece is more so that we should all be kind to each other because we're always in that turmoil. We're always in that loud energy where you're trying to preserve yourself and look like everything is okay. Like when she was building a house and she's trying and she's trying, but there's just so much energy and thought behind your present and conscious self that everybody's perceiving. There's actually so much more that is going on. But like you said, this is a material and not like final piece. So I would suggest or I would like to see that even though we go through all of this, we dance through the storm because I, I experienced that energy of the trauma and everybody just, we're trying to keep it together. But at the end of it all, I feel that we should dance through it and that feeling should come alive somehow at the end of it, even though we're trying to hold ourselves together, 
but let us see the light in that way that you're still dancing through it and not that you're ignoring all of the voices that are happening inside of you. But thank you so much. That was lovely. Thank you so much for that incredible piece, just to start there. Um, for me, what really stood out was the people um, at, against the wall, you know, and how you were holding each other up. And each person came with their story. And as the story progressed, you know, it kind of represented a falling apart that people feel, even if you kind of presenting yourself to the world, but deep down you're kind of falling, but there's things and people that keep holding you up in life and keep kind of drawing you back to life, you know, um, whether it's current children, whether it's um, optimism, the future, you know. Um, so that really kind of stood out to me. Um, also the idea of hanging on to things and the idea of loss. Um, I'm a person, I've got all of my mother's things. I never gave away anything. <laughs> and, you know, this was such a good interrogation of why do we hold on to these pieces and if we let go of them, do we fall apart? You know, if it gets lost, if we throw it away, if a house burns down, do we burn down? You know, um, and these are just some of the things that, you know, were on my mind as you guys were performing. Thank you. Thank you all, thank you all. Um, I want to just give it as a provocation that when I watch something like this, my mind is always thinking, oh, that moment or that image or this piece. And it's almost like now they're ready for the next two days of work. It would be, what if you all were standing in a line, individually slowly collapsing, while the man with the ruler is trying to measure you, but you keep on shifting away from the men. If there's a duet between, and really slowly between the, or a conversation between the saxophone and the viola, if the foot pointing had been just someone really trying to point their foot and not getting it, or trying to catch it up again, so that the moments which could be expanded and slowed and if the falling and catching was in silence. So as I'm watching, I'm seeing, oh, there are like 20 or 30 different things that could be pushed and taken further. And that's what the idea of these things, things are. So what you see, it's what, what you see as an artist when you're watching other people performing on stage and what we see as an audience of what are the things that galvanize our energy and imagine it taken to the next. What if it wasn't just Lego blocks, but it was much larger objects which are just constantly trying to be built but not. I mean, one of the things that the foot pointing does, the building of a house that doesn't work, the collapsing, yes, it comes from a kind of tragedy, but maybe you need to think of it as comedy also. And it's not feeling, oh, unless we say these words seriously, we can't get to the heart of the matter. Even with the comedy that you have, I mean, the crazy sounds of the saxophone, the story of a ruler that doesn't measure anything in the world. Um, those different moments can be pushed in that direction too. And sometimes you reach a greater emotional depth for the audience to feel that rather than for you. If you say on the stage, I'm feeling so sad, then you've done the work for the audience. They don't need to feel sad because you've got the sadness there. But if they see you in a very serious situation behaving as if it isn't there, then it's for us to put the emotion into it. So I think it's, it's, you know, I also know how long it takes to arrive at things and the difference between a first impulse and learning the grammar of what you are doing. If it's a piece about pointing your foot, what are the ways and <coughs> variations and details that you're going to put into that, that piece? This is really for, the, for other members of the audience who are not familiar with that process to understand that this is establishing a vocabulary and then the work continues from here, mm. learning what you've said. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, both uh, Tulani and Lantla and all of you. Thank you, Bob. Leave while the lights are OK, over to you. Athena? I think there is.
One more question and then we'll have to, yeah. thanks to load shedding, we'll have to cut it there. I just wanted to say it's really beautiful work. I work with the body for psychotherapy, but it was so strange because I normally would have these kids that say, oh, ma'am, it's crippling. Like this turmoil is just crippling and they just steal. But we use the body to release that. And it was interesting to see the opposite, like the juxtaposition of how the turmoil moves you before you are right. You, you are incited or invited to be moved by it. And there was constant movement, and it made me think of grief. And when I worked with grief, and people feel like, oh, the rhythm that is like of life and of pattern, if I lose it, who's going to hold it up for me? So having seen that sequence where there's like this constant rhythm and someone's holding it up, it's like, oh, this is what happens also like in, 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 in African communities where someone holds up the rhythm for you as, as you break down, as you fall, as you do all of that. And there was always something moving. And I think of it as the only turmoil we imagine in action is war. But when we experience stuff like depression, it feels like it's crippling, but it's a different kind of action, because then you cry, it's off tears, then you speak. It's mundane movements, but it's constant movement. And I, I just think I took that from that, instead of thinking of it as a crippling action, but in the mundane tasks of having to just sit and feel like, this is all I can do, but in that is movement to go and sit in a certain position, to speak, to cry, to sing, to hear, to listen, and the actions of others on us. And I, I think it was really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So with that, um, just a final word of thanks to Flantla, to Tulani, to these phenomenal artists. Uh, <laughs> this discovery and this interrogation with us, because this is a moment of, of really beginning, as we said, as Williams pointed out, there's so many possibilities that have emerged, and our, our hope from the Academy is that it's not just about possibilities in terms of material, but possibilities for you to take into your practice, possibilities of ways of working, possibilities that you have found within yourselves as you confront yourselves and each other and the work. Thank you to all of you for being here this evening. We wish you well, go well, go safely, and uh, we hope to see you all very soon. Thank you.